Yeah. Yeah, so I do, do a bit for non classical and then uh, there's a label called Gearbox okay. as well, which is um, it's been running for 10 years and that's based in King's Cross. And uh, yeah, they've just opened an office in Japan, in Tokyo. Okay. So there's a, a full-time person here called Roni, and, um, and then I'm sort of working as a consultant to that label. And um, we're going to hopefully sign some Japanese artists oh, okay. to the label. And I've, we've got one album coming out from an artist called Chihei Hatakiyama, who's a sort of ambient drone artist. Okay. So, um, I mean, does the label have like a strict sort of like musical mm. remit or is it eclectic? Or, mm. yeah? it's, it's pretty much whatever uh, Daryl who runs it likes, you know. So okay. it's, it's, a, it's, if he likes it, he'll sign it. So recently he's put out records by Abdullah Ibrahim. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Binker and Moses, you know, who are like, you know, one of the most dynamic jazz duos in, in the UK right now. And yeah, it's, yeah, there's a, an album by uh, Tiago Nassif from Brazil, which is, which is incredible, you know, but a kind of Brazilian post-punk, Arto Lindsay oh, wow. inspired record. So it's um it's all over the place in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's all kinds of things. Yeah. So those are the labels I'm kind of continuing to work. I mean, with. I mean, again, prior to our current situation, were you were you able to go out and play that kind of music? Did you have DJ gigs and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What about did you, whereabouts were you playing prior to now? <laughs> so, yeah, no, I suppose my main place I played a lot was uh, this place called Spiritland in, uh, well, there's one in King's Cross. Yeah, okay, yeah. And there's one in the South Bank yeah. Centre. And, um, and that was a lovely kind of relaxed kind of, you know, bar gig, you know, and they encourage people to explore their, their collections, ideally on vinyl, but, you know, anything goes really. Um, so that was my kind of favourite place I mean, to play. I mean, the systems in there are amazing yeah, yeah really right. good right really really good and um you know i'm not like a. I, I mean what about i mean within japan since you've been here do you, do you have any did you have any dj gigs here no so occasionally i kind of play you know when i've when i've come to visit i might play somewhere and i'm trying to think of some of those places but but no i didn't I didn't really have anything lined up here. Oh, okay yeah for sure but, and I've yet to come and see you play it. Uh, well, we need to have you come and guess, don't we? Well, that'd, be, that'd be really <laughs> you nice. Can yeah. Come and play some drone music. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I could do that. That'd be great. I mean, because the upstairs bit, the Tommy room, is like it's geared up for uh, you know not necessarily drone, but ambient stuff. Yeah, sure right. Do stuff up there. That sounds good. Yeah. Really yeah. Nice. And that's one of the the places in Tokyo, right? In terms of the sound system. I, everywhere I've been in. Tokyo has an amazing sound system. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the, the owners all compete against one another to have the most mind-blowing sound system. Right. right? Which yeah. is, again, part of the city's, huge yeah. part of the city's charm. Yeah, yeah, you know? completely. People really <laughs> care, don't they? About these things. <laughs> they really do. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's amazing. Right. Right. So, Nico, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about the compilation that you're just about to release on We Want Sounds, Tokyo yeah. Dreaming. Um, First of all, I, I was wondering what the title referred to. What do you mean by Tokyo Dreaming? Is it, I mean, is there a co kind of concept or something that links? Because the, the music on it is quite varied. I wonder whether the Tokyo Dreaming title linked those pieces in a way. Yeah, I think, I mean, when I talked to the label Nippon Columbia about the, the compilation, the theme that, you know, we, what we agreed to work with was Tokyo, as just as a theme. And um, for me, I always imagined uh, how incredible Tokyo would be, you know, if I was around here in the 80s as opposed to uh, being in Plymouth. Oh, in the bubble. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. around that time. And just imagine how, how, you know, if I was able to witness that, in, you know, because it happened in my lifetime, but I was 8,000 miles away, I was somewhere else in a very different place. So for me, this is like kind of, this is my kind of Tokyo dream. This is like oh, how I imagine okay. You know the music that would have been filling my kind of life at that time. Um, Your soundtrack to the eighties Tokyo bubble, yeah, economic bubble, yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. Okay. You know, even though some of the tracks are, you know, late seventies, generally it's kind of eighties, and you know, you would you would listen to something even if it's from the seventies in the eighties. Sure. So, um, yeah, for me this is kind of it feels like quite a personal collection, almost as if I was here at that time. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, so the piece. I mean, how did you find? How did you find the pieces that are included? I mean, was that like years and years of digging? Is it like a selection of favourites? I mean, 
I was going to ask, do you have a bar? Are you a digger? Do you have a bar collection of records? I do, yeah, in London. <laughs> I do have a lot of records that are, that are all sort of, um, yeah, they're all there. I haven't brought many with me. I've oh, okay. brought none pretty much with me. Okay. So it's quite weird to have like no. no so your vinyl's all in the UK? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it is. Yeah, it is. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I, when I think about diggers, I don't think I am a digger, but I've been definitely been searching and buying records for, you know, since the first thing I bought when I was probably, you know, 10 years old. So yeah. I've still got that first record. It's like, I, you know, I've kept all these, all these records I bought. Digger by default. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, yeah. I feel more, more genuine now by thinking about it that way. Because, you know, it's a bit like, the, even the term DJ I kind of struggle a bit with because I always think of DJs as being like Eric Murillo, you know, and sort of, yeah, well, I do yeah, honestly. Some, someone know. who's, who's making a crowd dance maybe. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's fun, I, you know, I have enjoyed that, but, so I don't know, I, I'm not, I don't know. It's that, what's that word, imposter syndrome thing? Where you kind of think like, am I really, you know, am I really a DJ? And am I really a digger? I, I'm not sure, you know. Well, I, it's I funny, think you have, I mean, you've been DJing on the radio for 20 odd years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I suppose, yeah. Think about it, I suppose. But um, but no, I mean, in terms of this compilation is there's only like maybe are they one... recent are they recent finds or are they things that have, you've accumulated over time? So these are mainly recent things. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this was uh, the result of, of spending a lot of time in the Nippon Columbia archives. Oh, okay. And just kind of um, having access to like all the music they've released, really, and just kind of and then also it was kind of cross referencing because. You know, a lot of this stuff isn't in uh, Romanji. It's not in, you know, you, you yeah. can't read it. Yeah. Or if you don't speak Japanese or read Japanese. So for me, it was a case of um, just looking at something and thinking how to kind of cool cover and then trying to find the translation to go on the YouTube to listen to it. Some of the music isn't available as, um, you know, they don't have physical copies of a lot of the stuff. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, so for me, I mean, the only things I really knew were like the Sakamoto track, uh, which yes. opens the album, The End of Asia. Yeah. Um, and then I also knew the word two. Okay, which yeah. is kind of like, after thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but a lot of the other things were kind of new. Would you be able to talk us through a few selections from? Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess. And play some music, obviously. I'll play some. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we can do that. We've got, got a nice little setup. <laughs> the vinyl is coming, so it just hasn't, hasn't come in time for it to be placed onto the turntable. But, um,. I mean, it makes sense to start with the Sakamoto track, um, yeah, okay. the end of Asia. So, uh, I guess for me, this kind of, um, I mean, it's funny on so many levels. I mean, it's the end of Asia, but in so many ways, like the beginning of a, of a new era of music in Asia in, and from Japan. And um, it just feels like Roji Sakamoto, who was this, you know, university student who was studying music, um, very quickly, you know, by the time he was, I'm not sure how old he was, in 1979, but you know, he's ready to release his first album with an incredible knowledge of how to play music, but also having access to all that equipment yeah. that was being made in Japan and, and being made affordable here in Japan. So it meant that people could suddenly have access to all this incredible electronic music um, equipment, you know? So, uh, and, and this record to me sounds like he's basically just got everything and thrown it all into, <laughs> you know, it's like, have some of that and have a bit more synthesizer here, have a drum machine and just, it's just a, a mass of ideas, but also a bit of a, a track that just gets into your head as well and, and sounds like it's, like, yeah, it, it sounds like the kind of, a kind of defining moment in music where this was like, it was a kind of full on Japanese experience. Of, of the past, you know, coming into the future. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously with, with, with YMO and with, with, with a lot of work, it became a lot more minimal, you know, and less maybe melodic and more about textures. And, yeah, sure. But this just feels like it's got everything. I thought it's a kind of maximum piece of music, <laughs> maximal, you know, to start off the compilation. Um, maybe we should have a listen. Yeah, we should definitely have a listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>